Welcome back to Sports Report. The Great Bridge Wildcats recently won a second straight Southeastern District regular season title. Our friend Larry Rabama from the Virginia Pilot caught up with Coach Gary Obenauer and the Wildcats for the latest installment of Pilot at Practice. I'm Larry Obama here at Great Bridge High School where the Wildcats finished the regular season 18 and 0. Now they're going for a region title. We're here with Great Bridge coach Gary Obenauer. Coach, talk about this season. Our season has been awesome so far. Uh, we definitely want to go a little bit further than last year and as we approach the uh, Southeastern District Tournament, we're looking to get a little bit better each game and hopefully roll that into the region. This season is, you know, it, it's been, we've had a lot of memories, you know, we've all played hard together. Every game we've gone out there, we laid it all on the line. I couldn't ask for anything more from these guys and going to the district, you know, we, had, we got tremendous confidence that, you know, we can go out and continue this, this run we've been going on. We set goals in the beginning of the year. That we make sure everybody work hard, everybody believe in themselves. We push each other throughout every practice. And we know we can uh, step out on the court every night, every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday night, whatever night it is, and we can get the W. We, we know coming into the season that you know, we were a tremendous team and we were capable of anything we wanted to you know, accomplish. So I think 18-0 and 0 is just a tribute to how hard these players have worked. So, I mean, to others this may seem like a surprise, but to me, I'm just, it seems like we, we, this is exactly what we're supposed to do. So. Our guys have, have played well together. Uh, I think the last four or five games especially, there's been you know, times uh, when we're in, in quarters and it gets a little bit tight and someone else steps up and it's one of those team things that you just can't explain. We just, we're all living through it right now, so we're very excited to move on. One of our goals is we want to, get, we want to go uh, undefeated in the district. Uh, we made that happen. Our next goal is to win the district tournament, and hopefully we'll be making that happen too. We have a tremendous amount of talent. We have uh, great players from the starters to the end of the bench, and uh, if they play like they can, we can definitely do it. We're going to have to beat a team we've never beaten before. Um, it's going to, you know, if it comes down into the first round, a beach team can beat us. We're not infallible by any means. Uh, we're going to have to play maybe a Maury. Uh, we're going to have to play a Peninsula team. We might run into Hampton, Kickatan. One of those teams you have to beat along the way to say that you're a state tournament team. And uh, that's what we have to do. It's going to take, you know, one team effort. You know, everybody's got to buy into this for us to make it to the state. And I think if we keep this up, we've got the talent and we should be able to do it. We just got to keep pushing. And, you know, everybody thinks just because we're 18 and no, we just not, we're not going to get that far. We, we know we can go far as we can if we keep pushing each other. Even though the uh, season is coming to an end, we still know to work hard. We set the, our goals to win this district tournament championship. We can compete. Uh, I've always thought we'd compete. Last year we lost a nail biter to kick a tan at the scope. We've always had that in us. We have to bring it out at the right time. I think these guys have it in them, an iron will to win. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. You can follow the Wildcats' road to a region title on Cox 11 or in the Virginian Pilot. For Pilot of Practice, I'm Larry Obama. We transition now to some Peninsula District basketball action. Girls game with Hampton versus Phoebus in the PD tournament. Here on Sports Report, the Lady Crabbers, the number three seed, the Phantoms of Phoebus, the number six seed in Hampton, of course, playing in its own gym. Very comfortable here now with a healthy Khadija Berger. And inside, they go to start things off. As you see, they get a bucket right there underneath by Dara Pearson, the six foot three sophomore forward. And in the Hampton defense, getting in the act right there with a steal and a bucket. Back to Pearson right now, the standout for the Lady Crabbers. Phoebus' defense has their work cut out facing her. Now they try to swing it here on the perimeter with the ball is Justifia Harvey. She is stolen though as Hampton gets the steal. Kanisha Bell with it going to go one on one here and then the find she has right there. Pearson again. Pearson off to a great start as Hampton building on its early lead against the underdog Lady Phantoms of Phoebus. Inbounds play here and a nice movement without the basketball as you see right there. It is Pearson and company continuing to pile it on here against Phoebus. Hampton with the basketball, he's swinging it to the corner. It's Bell right there, being closely defended. Gonna look inside once again in Hampton's interior game. Just too much for Phoebus here early on as it is Michaela Sale, the six foot tall junior forward, getting in with the bucket. 
Phoebus now swinging around the perimeter as the Hampton defense has pretty much bottled them up early on, but they're going to get a good look here in the paint. Layup is no good. Hampton, though, with the miss, going to take it coast to coast for two. It is Khadija Berger, the 5'8 junior guard, all district performer for the Lady Crabbers, and one of their stars. It is 13 to 1. Hampton on top of Phoebus with just over six minutes to play in the second quarter. Phoebus has to find the offense against the trapping Hampton defense. And right now, another turnover. No, it's not. It is picked up by Bianca Balmer Brown, the 5'11 guard, who appeared, appeared to be a turnover for Phoebus, but they come out with a basket here. They need more of those plays to go their way here against that Hampton trap. And this time, Hampton comes up with another steal. It's Kanisha Bell up ahead for two. It is scored right there by the Lady Crabbers, Letitia Smith. Hampton back on offense again, going inside. This time it is deflected, and Phoebus gets a turnover. They're off and running to the races. Layup is up and good for Kyara Brown on the fast break play. The 5'6 junior capitalizing, and now that lead is 14-31 to 17 in favor of Hampton midway through the third quarter. Late in the third quarter, Phoebus in transition. Bank shot is in there for the Lady Phantoms as that one is scored by none other than Brianna Edwards, the 5'5 senior guard and leader for the Lady Phantoms, but not enough as Hampton pulls away 63-30. to Phoebus getting 11 points apiece from Edwards and Bowens, but Dara Pearson with 21 points, converting 70% of her foul shots. Khadija Berger chipping in 11 as Hampton punches its region ticket for the playoffs. Boys action in the Peninsula District Tournament quarterfinals. It's the second seeded Hampton Crabbers, the defending state champions, playing on their home court for the last time this season against the seven seeded Minchville Monarchs, the underdogs, coached by Dennis Katufis. Early on, the Hampton defense very active as they get a steal. Sayante Melvin, Jordan Baker up ahead. Bucket is good for DeQuinn Moore, the ODU football signee, getting it done on the hardwood. Hampton out to the early lead. There's the man who gets it done night in and night out for the Hampton Crabbers. Going to play his college basketball at NC State. Anthony Cat Barber down the lane for two, making it look easy as pie as Hampton building on its early lead against Minchville. Monarchs have the ball now. Down the lane they go. Nice drive by Stefan McLean Burrell and Daquan Lake with the hook shot. The six foot seven sophomore center with a lot of promise for the Monarchs as they cut into that Hampton advantage. Moving up ahead now, second quarter action. Jordan Baker, the big shot maker. He connects from way downtown as the ODU Monarch signee delivers for Hampton, hitting outside shots all season long. He has done the All Peninsula performer. Missed shot for Minchville. Rebound, though, they come up with it, but it's a steal. Baker in transition now. He's going to find a teammate for two and the foul as it is Cat Barber delivering on the other end. Hampton still very much in control of things. Minchville trying to make a rally as it is a fadeaway shot. Nicely sank there by 5'10", senior guard Joshua Knight, not wanting to play his final game in that purple Minchville uniform. Crabbers with the basketball. Anthony Barber going to pull up for three. It's in as he is one of the top scorers in the state here, approaching a Peninsula District scoring record set by Bethel's Tony Rutland back in 1994. Barber is closing in on breaking that mark. And there is another three-pointer delivered by Jordan Baker as Hampton's outside shooting is going early on here. 18 to four, the Crabbers on top of the Monarchs. You see Dennis Katufa trying to rally his troops here as they are in a hole, a big one against the defending state champions and their guard play has taken over. Barber again delivering from way downtown as he has the ability to knock it down from deep and get to the rack at will. Hampton now with the basketball, Sammy Royal, the bull, Sammy the bull for two and he draws the foul. The Crabbers doing an excellent job of not only finishing at the rack but drawing fouls, putting Minchville in trouble, having to go deep into their bench now. And then it is another three-point shot that is canned by Brandon Sapp, 5'11", junior guard off the bench. The reserves getting in on the action for Hampton. Trey Perry down the lane, he gets it to go as Hampton is starting to separate itself from a very dangerous underdog in Minchville who upset Bethel late in the year. And then it's Jordan Baker again connecting from the perimeter as it is a round of applause for Anthony Cat Barber becoming the new Peninsula District career scoring record holder as he breaks Tony Rutland's mark set 19 years ago. Barber with a terrific career as he's closing in on 2,000 points in his great career with the Crabbers, a four-year starter and a reigning state player of the year. Barber with the nifty ball handling moves as he is just going right by his defender to the rat basket for two and drawing the foul. He's tough to check one-on-one. -on -one. Even when you double team him, he finds a way to get it done. And Hampton's moving on. They'll be back in the region playoffs as they prevail over Minchville rather comfortably, 62 to 40. 
They defeat the Monarchs. Anthony Cap Barber with 20 points, setting that Peninsula District career scoring record. Jordan Baker chipping in 16 for Menchville and defeat McLean Burrell with 9. Henson with 8. And the Monarch season is done, but Hampton continues to march on in the PD tournament and going to the region playoffs. Our Cox 11 Sports Report and VirginiaPreps.com Player of the Week. None other than Western Branch senior guard DeMonte Burns. 28 points, 6 assists, the game-winning basket in their 71-69 upset of Southeastern District top seed Great Bridge. He connects on 3 of 5 shots from long distance as the Bruins are going back to the region playoffs. Well, that'll do it here on this edition of the Cox 11 Sports Report. We'll talk to you again next time here with some playoff action in the Eastern Region Tournament at the Norfolk Scope here on Cox Channel 11.